Hello, welcome today. Thank you for taking the time to watch. This is Awaken to Truth. I am Michael Smith, and uh, I want to dive in a couple of minutes about uh, President Joe Biden, his remarks on inflation yesterday, because we have talked about uh, inflation and the economy at times on this channel. Primarily, uh, most of the videos are somewhat uh, biblical in nature, or they're at least kind of tying current events and, and biblical concepts or principles. Uh, but sometimes I just will discuss some of the things taking place because those affect uh, Christians, obviously, as well. Uh, they affect everybody, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian. But inflation is one of those things. And I had said uh, in a video sometime back that I was unconvinced that the Federal Reserve was really going to be able to fight inflation the way that they say that they are going to be able to fight inflation. And month after month after month, it continues to show that inflation continues ripping through the American economy. Prices continue going up and people are increasingly struggling with buying everyday necessities such as gas to uh, fuel their car, and groceries to feed their family. So naturally, eventually, President Biden has to address this. And as usual, he was uh, articulate and well-spoken and gave some riveting um, you know, uh, ideas as to how he was going to fight inflation. And here's a little snippet of that. And I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we built is inflation. And I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we built is inflation. Ah, so the strength that we build, evidently, is actually inflation itself. Of course, that was just another gaffe, which is commonplace anytime the president gives uh, an address that is more than two or three minutes long. Even if there's a teleprompter, he can't seem to even read the teleprompter or remember the pre-planned uh, statements that he was supposed to make. And so he stated that uh, the strength of the nation is actually inflation, which is the exact opposite of what he was trying to say. And it is the exact opposite of what he was trying to accomplish by letting people know, don't worry, he has inflation under control. He's going to be able to do it. Well, people are increasingly not believing that to be the case. And he seems to be understanding that people are increasingly not believing him. So he began to paint what he considers his biggest opponents. He doesn't consider his biggest opponents to be the Republican Party because they're really not his opponents. Uh, if you look at Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and many of the prominent Republicans that have been in office for so many years, they're not big opponents of, of Joe Biden or the Democratic agenda. Uh, they simply give a few talking points here and there, make a few rebuttals here and there. But when it comes down to it, they're going to do very little to stand in their way because they are essentially part of what is known as the uniparty. It is controlled opposition that really are working towards one common goal. And probably the biggest factor to that goal is enriching themselves and making things go easy and well for themselves, as opposed to going easy and well for the people that have elected them and put them in office. But Biden was not uh, really at the top of his game, and he hasn't been ever since he's been office, and that didn't change yesterday. And he began to attack the what he is now calling the ultra MAGA crowd. And I believe that his attack on the ultra MAGA crowd is actually only going to strengthen and increase those quote unquote ultra MAGA, because this is um, certainly a big trick by the Democratic Party is they try and label their opponent something that they feel is going to be um, negative and they think that if they can do that over and over again, people will not want to associate with that thing because we know that the Democratic Party, by and large, has the mainstream corporate media in their back pocket and the mainstream corporate media, MSNBC, CNN, ABC, ESPN, Disney, you name it, they will go along with whatever they want them to 
do. And they will continue to try and brainwash the American people as to what is best for them. Uh, but increasingly, people are waking up to that as well. And they're no longer listening to what the mainstream media has to say. Um, you know, in Fox News, there's a different side of the same coin. Uh, I think it's a bit better than some of the others. At least it has some different viewpoints. I think there are some good hosts and opinions that are on there. But, you know, in reality, they are playing to their audience, just as some of these other outlets are trying to play to their audience. But the MAGA agenda, uh, ultra MAGA, so he's trying to paint them as ultra radicals. But in reality, what is the MAGA agenda these days? Make America Great Again, obviously, is what MAGA stands for. And the, the MAGA agenda today is really becoming the opposite of radical. It's becoming more of what common Americans see needs to be done. And it's becoming an inclusive nationalism. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's not a alt-right party. It's not a white party. Uh, in fact, Hispanics are joining the MAGA movement in record numbers as they never have. And this is terrifying to the Democrats. And I've even seen mainstream uh, outlets that have admitted that this is a disturbing trend for the Democrats. Uh, not as much, but even the Black community is somewhat departing from uh, the Democratic policies and agendas, mainly for whatever reason, it's Black men, not as much Black women at this point. Uh, and so what does the White House do? It doubles down and continues to play more identity politics. The uh, press secretary, Jen Psaki, is going to be moving on to a cushy position at MSNBC and taking her place is going to be uh, the epitome of identity politics. It's going to be a woman of color, which is fine, but that's not enough. She also happens to be a lesbian. So we have to get as many oppressed boxes checked as possible to continue to play these identity politics. And if you watch any of her uh, work that she's done on some of the other news channels, she tends to think that everything that anyone who does not agree with her says is racist. And, you know, again, that's part of the labeling game. But people are increasingly not buying this labeling game any longer. And an inclusive form of nationalism is beginning to uh, play out. And the media tried to paint nationalism as if it was the worst thing ever. But the only reason they're really painting it as if it's the worst thing ever is because it's not globalism. And globalism has done so much to uh, increase and enrich the elite and the corporations and uh, the country club party that is the beltway of Washington, D.C. So anything that would threaten globalism obviously would have to be portrayed or painted in a very negative light. And so when Trump was promoting an agenda that was somewhat nationalism in the sense of America first, they began to try and paint it as white nationalism. So uh, in many Americans' minds, especially those that are easily influenced and swayed by the brainwashing of the media, nationalism and racism can be one and the same. And that absolutely is not true. In fact, the founding fathers viewed nationalism as a positive thing as long as it is in the proper place. Nationalism does not mean that you don't like other countries. Nationalism does not mean that you are racist towards other countries, other ethnicities, other nations. Nationalism simply means that while you may like those other countries, you like your country better. So uh, I live in a development and probably many of you live in a development and you have neighbors to your left and to your right and maybe across the street from you. And so the concept of uh, nationalism that, and I, I will admit that there can be forms of nationalism that are unhealthy, but that doesn't mean that all nationalism is unhealthy. But the base idea of nationalism is I like my neighbor. I like my neighbor over there. I like them both. I appreciate both of them. But I like my family a little better. And that is the idea behind nationalism. It's not that we don't want good things for other nations. Those nations hopefully have leaders, presidents, prime ministers, whatever the case may be, that are doing everything they can to see that the interest of their nation 
is put in the most favorable place possible. And that's all that inclusive nationalism really is, is people that are of Hispanic heritage, black heritage, Jamaican heritage, Asian heritage, uh, uh, Middle Eastern heritage, whatever that may be. If you want the nation that you live in to have leaders to put that nation in the preeminent spot, not that we deny any other nations or not that we do bad things to any other nations, but we certainly want our nation to be uh, at the forefront of our leaders' minds. And we want the best deals and the best things and the best uh, situations for our nation to uh, be at the forefront of our leaders' minds, then you are a nationalist. And I think that Joe Biden knows that more and more Americans are beginning to wake up to the fact that a little bit of nationalism is not necessarily a bad thing. And it certainly is not a race of thing, racist thing. So I think that's why they're upping the ante and they're continuing to try and label. And I think the ultra MAGA is actually something that's going to backfire. It seems to be something that many people are embracing. Well, if Joe Biden is against it, then maybe I'm absolutely for it. So people may increasingly come out of the closet in the months to come leading up to the 22 election and show that maybe there's more mainstream um, acceptance for ultra MAGA than Joe Biden even anticipated. So thank you for taking the time to watch this little video today. I hope it was in some way helpful or enlightening to you, or at least informative. And I'll be back with another episode very soon.